Hello everyone. In this video, I will be talking about how to get a mining engineering job in Canada as a foreigner. Doesn't matter if you're from India, if you're from China, if you're from Africa, you want to make sure that you watch this video all the way until the very end because I'll explain the entire process and I'll give you tips along the way. And so this is part one of this video series and here I'll be talking about visas and immigration. So there are three main common pathways for entering Canada for work. The first is the student route, which is the best route to go for, especially if you want to be an undergraduate student in Canada. And the reason is because these undergraduate students can get a co-op work term. And once you have that Canadian work experience, it's a lot easier to secure a full-time job after you graduate. Next is a work permit. And this is for those who want to come to Canada purely just for working. And Route 3 is immigration. And this is for those who want to work and live in Canada long term. So first, let's discuss Route 1, which is the student route. So to go on the student route, the documents that you need are a study, study permit, a visitor visa or an electronic travel authorization, a co-op work permit, and a post-graduation work permit once you have graduated. And the thing to notice about number two, the visitor visa or electronic travel authorization, once you get approved for a study permit, then you'll be uh, automatically issued that visitor visa or the ETA. So what is the study permit? It's a document that will allow foreign nationals to study at designated learning institutions in Canada or also known as DLI. But the thing is that not all DLIs make you eligible for the post-graduation work program. So you want to make sure that you select a DLI that will get you the degree that you need to make you eligible for the PGWP program. And so here in this link, I have included a list of all the DLIs. How long is the study permit valid for? Well, it's valid for the length of a program plus 90 days. So typically I would recommend people to get a bachelor's degree, which is at least four years, plus an additional 90 days. And the 90 days is to let you prepare to leave Canada or apply to extend your stay. So what's the cost and processing time? It will take 150 Canadian dollars to apply for it. And depending on where you're applying from, um, the processing time will differ. But for Indian citizens, it can take up to 34 weeks. And that doesn't include the time it takes to send an application from the Visa, visa Application Center from your country to Canada. And it also doesn't include the time required to give your biometrics. So you can probably expect it to be longer than that 34 weeks or whatever time that is required for processing for your country. And you can check it with this link I've included here. So if you want to accelerate your processing time, what can you do? Well, you can see if you're eligible for the Student Directs program. So the criteria for the, the Student Direct program is that you must be living in China, India, Morocco, Pakistan, the Philippines, Senegal, or Vietnam. You must also have an acceptance letter from a post-secondary designated learning institution. So you must be accepted to a school first. Have proof that you have paid your tuition for your first year of study and have a guaranteed investment certificate of Canadian $10,000. So this is just to make for the government of Canada to make sure that you have the financials to study in Canada and also live in Canada. You want to have a language test result that show a score of six or higher in each of the skill. So reading, writing, speaking, and listening on the international English language testing systems. Okay. And you want to make sure that you have your most recent secondary or post secondary school transcripts. And if you meet all of these criteria, then you can apply to the student diary program, and then you can have your application process in just 20 calendar days. So what's next after you get your study permit? 
After you get your study permit, you want to get your co-op work permit so that you can start looking for jobs. And the great thing about the co-op work permit is that it is free to apply. And then next, you want to start looking for jobs and applying for them. And so in this link here, I've included some exact strategy that I use. So I'll actually link the video up top here in the top right corner. And you can find out exactly how I job search. And then once you graduate, you want to apply for the post-graduation work permit program, which will allow you to work after you have graduated. And the duration of the post-grad work permit depends on the length of your program, but it will last for a minimum of eight months up to a maximum of three years. So it depends on how long you've studied. So let's just recap what we went through. Ideally, you want to be a co-op student because that's the best way to secure a full-time job in Canada. Canadian employers really want to see that you have Canadian work experience. Next, you want to apply for a study permit, which costs 150 Canadian dollars. And if you meet certain conditions, you can apply to the Student Direct Stream program, which will reduce your processing time to just 20 calendar days. And then once your student study permit is approved, you'll be given by the Government of Canada either a visitor visa or an electronic travel authorization, which is the document that will allow you to enter into Canada. And to, co to work in a co-op program, you need to get a co-op work permit, which is free to apply. And when you have graduated, you can apply for the post-graduation work permits. So that's the student routes. Next is the work permit route. So step one is, again, you need to get a visitor visa and the application fee for this one is 100 Canadian dollars. Processing time depends on where you're from, but for, for, for people in India, it will take up to 250 days. And the visitor visa will allow you to stay in Canada for six months. Step two is to get a work permit. So this will cost 155 Canadian dollars. Again, processing time varies depending on where you're from, but it will take up to 32 weeks for people in India. And it will also allow you to stay in Canada for up to six months. So there's actually two types of work permit. The first type is an employer specific work permit. And this is specifically for those for those who are able to secure a job offer beforehand. Um, this one is a little bit harder to get because you need an employer to give you either a copy of a labor market impact assessment or LMIA or an offer of employment number to include your application. So if you have a job offer beforehand, then you want to get an employer specific work permits. But if you don't, you want to apply for an open work permit, which lets you work for most employers in Canada. And this one is for people who don't have a job offer yet. And for this permit, you can apply for it even when you're outside of Canada, inside of Canada, or when you arrive at a port of entry. And it, it is strongly recommended that you apply for it before you arrive in Canada. So, now that you have your work permit and your visitor visa or ETA, step three is to keep track of when your work permit expires. So you need to apply for an extension at least 30 days before your current work permit expires. The extension costs 155 Canadian dollars and the processing time can take up to 137 days. So if you do the math already, you figured out that the processing time will be longer than that 30 days that you need to apply before your work permit expires. And so if you apply to extend your work permit before it, it expires, you can legally stay in Canada until a decision is made on your application. So important thing to keep in mind is apply for the extension at least 30 days before the current work permit expires. And if you want to accelerate your processing time, you can reduce it to just two weeks if you meet the following requirements for the global skills strategy. Unfortunately, 
I did some research and it seems like most mining engineers won't be eligible for it. But I will tell you about the requirements anyways, in case some of you guys are eligible. So first criteria is that the position you're applying for needs to pay $38.46 per hour, that's in Canadian, Canadian dollars, or 80000 in annual base salary, or equivalent to the prevailing wage for the occupation if it is higher than either of those two. Uh, you need to have advanced knowledge of the industry, an advanced degree in an area of specialization of interest to the employer, and or minimum of five years of experience in the field of specialized experience. So if you have all of these criteria, then you can try to go for the Global Skills Strategy Program. So to recap the work permit routes, step one, get a visitor visa so that you can enter and stay in Canada for six months. Next, you want to get a work permit that, so that you can start working in Canada. And there are two types of work permit, the employer specific work permit and the open work permit. But most likely you'll want the open work permit as that will allow you to work for most companies in Canada and that will give you more choice. The work permit is valid for up to six months as well. And you want to keep track of when it expires and apply for an extension beforehand. And if you meet special criteria, you can reduce your work permit application time to just two weeks under the Global Skills Strategy Program. So that's Route 2 for work permits. Route 3 is immigration. So there are three main immigration pathways for mining engineers, at least as of 2020. It's, the first one is the Express Entryway. Second is the Atlantic Immigration Pilot Program. And the third is Rural and Northern Immigration Pilots Program. So for the express entry, what you will need to do is you need to answer a questionnaire and provide documentation about the following, your age, your education, work experience, whether you have a valid job offer, English or French language skills, and adaptability. They want to know how likely you're, you're going to be able to settle here in Canada. So if you scored out of 100 and you need a minimum score of 67 to pass, and so I actually took a look at the details in here. And ideally, age, you want someone who's young. Education, they want someone who's highly educated, has lots of work experience. And ideally, you have a job offer already beforehand. You have a good knowledge of the English and or French language skills. And they want to see that you're able to adapt to here in Canada. So if you've been in Canada before, that will give you more points. And so what they'll do is once they have received all the applications, they'll find the highest scores and they'll invite you to apply for your PR or your permanent residence card and you'll be given 90 days to apply for it. Next is the Atlantic and the Rural and Northern Pilot Program. So these are region specific programs that want to spread the benefits of economic immigration to smaller communities. So for the Atlantic region, you'll be working in provinces such as New Brunswick, Prince Edward Island, Nova Scotia, Newfoundland and Labrador. So in the Atlantic region, there are some mining uh, communities that you can work in, but um, there's probably more opportunities in the rural and northern areas. So here's the list of them. And if you click the blue hyperlink, you can find the this list that I've uh, referenced. And you can click on these community website links. But for example, North Bay, Sudbury, Timmins, and Thunder Bay. These are all communities in Ontario. These are all populated by mining cities. Um, as, the, as their communities are mainly centered around the mining industry. All right, so that brings us to the end of this video. I hope you guys learned lots about what it takes to enter into Canada and get a work permit. So what's next? In part two, I'll talk more about how to get a job offer from a Canadian employer. Specifically, I'll talk about cover letter and resume 
networking. And actually, I'll also talk about the interview process. So if this is a topic that interests you, make sure you hit the red subscribe button and to hit the bell icon so you don't miss this video when it comes out. And for those of you that want this presentation and all the handy reference URLs that I have included, make sure you do these two things. One, you follow me on Instagram at Quan underscore FVNG, and I'll have that URL in the link description below. And then you want to comment on my latest post with the word visa. And once I see the word visa, I'll send you directly the link to this PowerPoint so you can have all those handy reference URLs for yourselves. 